I asked you guys what topics you wanted me to make a video on next. You said allelic genes and ball pythons. You wanna get nerdy? Let's get nerdy. <laughs> What's going on everybody? It's Adam at Proper Royals. Thank you for joining me here today. If we've not met before, this channel is all about my family's journey from ball python hobbyist to ball python business. We document everything here. We talk about the snakes, the business. Today we're going to talk about genetics. It's always about ball pythons and uh, if you enjoy the content, I hope you'll come hang out in the future. Feel free to subscribe, check it out, hang out. I posted on Instagram a question asking, what video do you guys want to see me make next? I need sometimes some like creative input. Man, I put out, generally I put out two of these videos a week, plus I do a live stream, daily Instagram content, Facebook content, you know, so sometimes you just gotta go, what What am I gonna do next? And it's really cool because it gets the, uh, it gets the juices flowing creatively. I got a lot of good ideas that I'll be working on coming up soon. So I posted what video do you want me to do next? And my homeboy Derek at Big D's Pythons said, Olivic Jeans. And I thought, ah, it's not that exciting. And then I got thinking about it, and actually it is. They're super useful, they're super powerful. We should talk, like this whole video is gonna end up being about the power of allelic genes. If you're breeding ball pythons and you don't understand the power of allelic combos, this video is for you. We gotta get through some nerdy stuff. We're gonna have to talk genetics here in just a minute. I'll get through it, I promise. But then we'll talk about why they're so cool and so powerful, and we'll even take a look at some of my snakes. So stick around the video today. Before I get too far, be sure to check out my link tree link down below. It has all of my contact information and it has all the places you can find proper royals. If you reach out to me, I will respond. I will get back in touch with you. If I can help you out, please let me know. Secondly, if you'd like to support this channel and you want to get a broader exposure for your own brand and you think it might be a good idea to align our brands in a sponsorship or advertising deal, please feel free to let me know. I've got various packages and we can always make a custom package for you. Allelic jeans, what in the world? Don't turn away, get through this. Because seriously, if you're gonna breed ball pythons, you've got to understand this stuff. You don't really have to be any kind of rocket scientist to understand it. So let's talk through these, I promise. I'll put it in layman's terms that we can all understand. With that being said, because I'm putting it in layman's terms and I'm not a genetic scientist, those of you that are genetic scientists, take it easy on me. If I've uh, totally misstated something or I'm totally wrong about something, please comment in the comments and I'll fix it. I'll do what I can and I'll learn from it. But I'm gonna put this information in a way that we can hopefully all understand it. An allele, A-L-L, E-L-E, -E, an allele. What is an allele? Well, this part I did take from, this is not layman's terms, this is actual scientific definition, and I think it fits, and now we're gonna, and then we'll put it in a way that we can all understand. So the definition of an allele is one of two uh, or more, could be more in a complex, but, but to, for today, we'll keep it simple. One of two alternative forms of a gene found at the same place on a chromosome. Great, Adam. What does that mean? All right, let's say it one more time. One of two alternative forms of a gene found at the same place on a chromosome. Without turning this whole thing into a genetics lesson other than on allelic genes, let's make some assumptions here. Let's assume that, that, that we're gonna keep it simple and that each space on a chromosome has basically two, two slots that you can plug something into, okay? And they gotta be this related gene or essentially the same gene. That's not technically correct, I know, but for our explanation today, let's go with it, okay? So on this chromosome, that conveniently dictates what this snake is gonna look like, you got two slots. Think about this with me for a second. In those slots, if one gene is plugged into one slot and you can see the result, 
We call that dominant. I'm not getting into codoms and dominance today is dominant for, for what we're talking about. So if you have one copy of pastel plugged into the pastel slot, you get a visual pastel, okay? If you have two copies of pastel, one from the mom and from the dad, plugged into the pastel slot, you get what's called a super pastel. And you can see the effects of both the pastel and the super pastel. We call that a dominant. Technically, I believe it's an incomplete dominant because when you put the two of them together, then it becomes a complete dominant. It's dominant. Let's take on a different slot, the pied slot. If you have one gene of pied go into that slot, you don't see anything. You might see markers and that stuff, but, but for the sake of our discussion, you don't see anything. We call that heterozygous or het pied. It only has one example of the pied gene present. We don't visually see it. We call that a recessive gene, and that animal would be het for pied. If you plug a second pied in, uh, gene in there from the other parent, boom you get a visual pied. Still with me? So you got dominance that one, uh, one gene, you see it, two genes, it makes a super. Recessive genes, one gene, you don't see it, it's a het. Two genes, you do see it, it's called a visual recessive. All right, believe it or not, those are referred to as alleles, or those slots are for alleles. And what can happen is that there can be related genes that also fit into those slots and they have very, very specific properties. Before we get to the alleles, let's continue to talk about the behavior of when two slots are full. So when two slots are full, when you have a super or you have a visual recessive, here's what happens. Every offspring is guaranteed to get one of those two slots passed on, but not both. Always one, never both. That's really important. Always one, never both. Let's, let's, let's talk this through. If you have a super pastel male, it's got two pastels plugged into the slots on the chromosome. If you breed that super pastel male to a normal female, 100% of the offspring will have one pastel gene and they will all be visual pastels. So they always pass on one and none of the babies will be super pastels. You would have to get another pastel from another parent. That's a different story. A super pastel will pass on always one pastel, never both pastels. Got it? Always one, never both. Let's do the pied example. Visual pied to a normal will always pass on one of the pied genes, so all the babies will be 100% het for pied. None of them will be visual pieds because both were not passed on. Okay, if you followed me this far, now we're getting into the cool stuff with allelic combos. There are combos that are called allelic. And what happens when you find an allelic combo is that different genes that affect generally dominant and co-dominant, but we're gonna get to some recessive ones too, which is amazing. When you plug in these allelic genes that are different, but they're related, one of two alternative forms, you get a visual combo, and it does what's called acts like a super, ALS. Always one, never both. Let's talk through this. I have an allelic combo called a mystic potion. It's the combination of a mystic and a Mojave. This is a female. If I breed her to a normal male, all of the babies, all of them, 100% without exception, will be either Mystic or Mojave, but they will not be Mystic and Mojave. Both cannot get passed on. You'll never pr produce a normal if you're breeding allelic combos. You see the beauty there? That's pretty cool, huh? Thank you for sticking with me through the very tough genetics, you know, gymnastics and the mental following. Hit pause, rewatch it if you need to. The allelic combos are really powerful because it can allow you to further predict what offspring possibilities you would get and it allows you to eliminate the possibility of breeding normals, which when you're, whether you're breeding for hobby or business, generally anytime you can avoid a normal, the better off you are. 
Generally, we're breeding ball pythons for the various variety of colors and morph mutations and that kind of thing. Don't get me wrong, normals are beautiful, but when you have one or two, but you probably don't need more, you know? So we like, if you like variety, uh, allelic combos are fantastic for that because normally there's always a chance that you will get normals, not if you have allelic combos. Fantastic, right? The other cool thing is you can have double allelic combos. You can have an allelic combo for every slot on that chromosome. So if you had something like a mystic potion that was also a vanilla fire, vanilla and fire are an allelic combo. So all the babies would be either vanilla or fire and they'd be mystic or Mojave. You'd have 100% two gene combos, all kinds of different variety of possibilities, but none of them would be normal. So that's the cool power of allelic genes. In my own collection, uh, I've got between acts like supers, supers, and allelic combos, which, which are act like supers. Uh, I've got quite a few different options that are brewing or that, are, that I either have or are brewing. And then we got to talk about a recessive allelic combo. This is cool stuff. Nerdy, I know, but genetics have never been so fun. I'm a food and beverage guy and I have a history degree and I'm sitting here making videos about ball python genetics. This is fantastic, right? All right, in my collection, I have a super enchi clown, which means that all of her offspring will all be enchi because enchi is a super. You're gonna get one, but never both. And she's a clown, a visual recessive. Always one, never both. So all of her babies will be Enchi Het Clown, no matter what, at minimum. Breed her to another clown that gives the other the other Het, the double Het is visual. You know, Enchi looks great in most things. Not everything, but most things Enchi looks great in. I love having that super. Another uh, super that I have is a Super Mojave. This is pretty cool. First off, it makes an all white snake with a slightly purple grayish head and bright vivid blue eyes beautiful snakes I man just eye-catching snakes and a very simple combo it's just two of the mojave gene one from the mother and from the father combined to make that white blue-eyed leucistic if you remember earlier i said also that i had a mystic potion female that super mojave is a male so let's talk through this for a minute if i breed that super mojave male to the mystic potion female we've got an allelic combo or an or a super in both parents so the, on the mom's side, every baby is gonna be either Mystic or Mojave. And on the dad's side, every baby is gonna be Mojave. So that means the babies are all gonna be either Mojave Mojave, which is a super Mojave and will we'll reproduce the father, or they'll be Mojave Mystic and they'll reproduce the mother. No normals and a clutch of either all white or Mystic Potion snakes. That's pretty cool for really some baseline entry level gene combinations that are really attainable. You could, you could get into that project really quickly and never produce a normal. That's cool. I, I, I got no other way to put it. That is cool. The, the barrier to entry is not very high in this hobby to really produce some amazing eye-catching snakes for sure. What else do I have? I got some future allelic combos. If you're wondering to yourself, what are some allelic combos? You know, off the top of my head, I don't know a whole lot. Uh, Fire Vanilla, most certainly. The Mystic Potion, the Mystic and the Mojave, absolutely. I believe all of the Blue-Eyed Leucistic Complex are allelic combos so any of the white snakes that you could produce a lesser to a uh, you know a bamboo would be allelic a lesser to a mojave would be allelic there's there's a ton of snakes and or not a ton seven or eight genes in the blue atlasistic complex if you go on the morph market community which by the way if you've never checked out that that forum that posting board it's a fantastic community but if you go on there uh, there is a list of allelic combos that's running that is that is uh, you know curated by the community but one of them that's really neat to me is uh, Enchi and Cinnamon are actually allelic who'd have thought because they really don't look alike they don't do the same thing Cinnamon does much different things than Enchi does but they are allelic they they they, they occupy that same slot on the or set of slots on the uh, chromosome you can get an Enchi Cinnamon and all the offspring will always be Enchi or cinnamon and never normal. 
That's gonna be pretty neat. I love Enchi and Clown. Cinnamon and Clown is pretty cool. They're both dark morphs, kinda. Cinnamon definitely, and she sort of. And I've got a lot of lavender projects, and, and, and the darker morphs look great in lavender, and she looks amazing in lavender. So I'm going to produce, I'm gonna do my best in this upcoming season to produce some Enchi cinnamon combos, because they will work really, really great in my future recessive projects when I wanna build hats and then breed, you know, line breed back to the parents to produce visuals with those uh, dominants in them. This new part, this part is 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 rarely, uh, rarely. This new part is relatively new stuff. There are two examples that I know of, and maybe more. Chime in if there are more, and you know of them. Two examples of recessive allelic combos. What? I, let's just go out with it. I mean, they are. The first combination is candy, and albino. So they're both a form of albino or albinism, but they look quite different. Candy is, is to me, quite a bit more striking than the albino, but the albino has a pretty stark orange and white, whereas the candy has yellows, peaches, and purples. If you take a visual candy and you breed it to a visual albino, all of the babies, let's think this through for a second, all of the babies are het candy and het albino. But it turns out those are allelic. They'll fit into the same two slots on the chromosome. And what happens is that you get a visual result from a double het, which only happens in one other circumstance that I know of. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. You can get what's called a candino, which is technically a het candy, het albino in the same animal and it produces an animal that looks very, very much like a candy, but it's a little more subtle as it grows up, and it's truly a combination of albino and candy. Amazing. Talk about a low barrier to entry. You don't have to have, your odds are much higher of producing that visual recessive allelic combo. And the other cool thing is that normally a het only half of its offspring would produce another het. In this situation, all of the babies, 100% of the babies will be either het for candy or het for albino if you were to breed a candino. You would get no normals and no 0% hets. They would all be 100% one or the other. You wouldn't know which but they are 100% one or the other. The other involves a, uh, a relative, well, a, a great gene, it involves clown, and then a relatively new gene called a, a cryptic. A cryptic is really pretty cool. It looks, it looks like clown on the head somewhat, or mostly, but then the body looks a whole lot more like a really scrambled pattern or busted up pattern, regular ball python. But the visual is really, really stunning on it, on a cryptic. But what happened is that guys like Garrick DeMeyer and, and Billy were breeding these. They would have sworn they were het clowns. Then they're getting these weird looking, not quite clown animals. And what they realized is that cryptic and clown are allelic. And a het clown, het cryptic makes what's called a krypton. To make things even more cool or more weird or more of a headache, however you want to look at it, is visually, the project is still so new that they've, nobody's really been able to pinpoint a firm way to distinguish visual cryptics from cryptons. So the double, you know, the het cryptic, het cryptic, the cryptic cryptic making a visual cryptic looks the very same as a het clown, het cryptic which we call a Krypton. It's a pretty, and, and I think they're, they're really neat uh, projects. I have both of those going in my collection. That My candy is not bred yet. I am expecting a clutch of a Kryptons or 100% Heck Clowns this year. I bred my visual uh, male pastel clown to a female pastel Heck Cryptic, which means half the babies by the odds will be Kryptons and all and half will be 100% Heck Clown. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. And that's the power of allelic genes. All right, I think I got through it. If I, if I, I don't think I messed things up. I think I got through that pretty well. 
Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Let me know what allelic combinations you're looking forward to getting into your collection and what you'll be looking out for in the future as well. Thanks for joining today. Uh, until we see each other next time, be sure to check out these videos right here. It's where I keep up with everything that we have going on here at Proper Royals. I tell you all about it twice a week, sometimes more, sometimes less, but generally twice a week. I cannot wait until I get to see you in the next video. Until then, thank you and see ya.